episode number 63 of the Pilot the Pilot podcast takes off now. Uh, my name is Natalie Fly Girl Kelly. I am the founder, manager, owner of Fly Girl LLC and the Fly Foundation. What is going on, AV Nation, and welcome back to the Pilot the Pilot podcast. My name is Justin, and I am your host. Thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to listen to today's episode. Today's episode features Natalie Kelly. Natalie Kelly is the CEO, the creator, the main person behind Fly Girl LLC. You might know her from her Instagram page, or you also might know her from the scholarship fund that she's been doing and where she was able to raise over $16,000 to give scholarships for women in aviation. This is an amazing feat. This is just such an amazing thing just to hear. And I love that she's giving it all back. She's giving all back for girls and women in aviation because let's be real, we need some more women in aviation. Aviation, without further ado, I don't want to waste any more of your time. The only last thing I will say is please leave us a review on iTunes if you haven't done so already. Check out our website, pilottopilothq.com. And if you love, love the podcast and you want to support us, please go ahead and support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash pilottopilot. I was able to use some Patreon money to buy some new equipment for Oshkosh. I bought a Zoom H6 recorder and some Sennheiser microphones that I'll be able to do some cool recordings. And I have some really fun stuff planned for Oshkosh. I'm looking forward to it. But anyways, I don't want to waste any more time. Without further ado, here's Natalie Kelly. Hey, Natalie, thanks for coming on the Pilot to Pilot podcast. Thank you very much. No problem. I'm excited to talk with you. I've uh, I've been following your page and I've seen it for for quite some time and I was just very interested in to uh, tell your story and share more about what you're doing. Okay, cool. I love to talk about it. Yeah, I, all aviators love talking about it, right? Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Uh, I want to know more about you and know more about why you got into aviation. What was your original inspiration for starting aviation? Okay. Well, um, I always wanted to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. It was on a bucket list that I had created back in 1999. <laughs> uh, back when, well, I don't even think we had computers. We had computers, but not everyone had a computer. In the world. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> I think I, I typed know. it up maybe on a college computer or yeah, something and that's funny. printed it off and stuck it in a scrapbook somewhere. That's awesome. And there's probably about 25 things on there. And one of them was to earn my private pilot's license. That's so cool. Um, the reason I wanted to be a pilot was mainly because I had an uncle that um, is a private pilot and he flies warbird airplanes and he used to take me flying when I was a kid. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and I just loved it. He did. He does formation flying. He does uh, aerobatics and he would do those things with me. And I thought it was just the greatest thing ever and loved it. And my dad is a pilot. My oh, dad cool. was in the military. He was in the Navy. And then he um, retired from the Navy and flew briefly for an airline, Northwest Airlines at the time, yeah. and then, um, flew for FedEx for 20 plus years and has been retired from FedEx for a while. Oh, cool. But of course, I never flew with him. I mean, he was the commercial pilot and they're yeah. in the military, but... Um, and my parents divorced when I was a teenager. It was just not something I did with him, but I was able to fly with my uncle quite a bit and really loved it. And he always encouraged me to to keep that dream alive and go after it one day. Um, so Tom passed on, um, graduated college, got married, had kids, stayed home with my kids <laughs> for been 19 plus years. Yeah. And about three years ago, um, now I could talk and talk and talk, by the way. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> fine. That's the best, and, yeah. <laughs> and just something, go ahead. You'll just have to stop me. That sounds good. Um, but when my older son, um, we were, you know, he was a teenager and we were having some issues with him. And I got to the point where I just needed to kind of like step away and come up with my own interest and something that was really more about me and decided that it was time to start flying. We had the money for me to do it at the time. I had more time because my kids were teenagers and didn't need me quite as much and decided to start flying. So I started taking lessons at Sporties here in Cincinnati. Now I'm from Nashville nice. originally, sort of. I mean, my dad was in the military, but most of yeah. my life was spent in Middle Tennessee. So would you drive from Middle Tennessee to Cincinnati to, or Bav is it Bavaria no, somewhere up there? Job uh, transferred us to Cincinnati okay. about 10 years ago. And um, 
Sporties was relatively close and it, you know, I'd done a little research and knew it was a reputable school and company and it was only, it's only about 25 minutes from my house. So I just called them up one day and like, I want to take lessons and was very nervous and and intimidated. And (laughs) I thought, I mean, I was in my, I don't know, like 43, I think at the time and a female and, you know, it's just intimidating when, especially I haven't been like done anything other than being a mom, which is a lot, I know, but I wasn't like running a company or learning any, I wasn't in the classroom or anything. Right. I have been in a class for a long time. You're just the CEO of your family pretty much, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. Well, I didn't really know what it was going to be like yeah. to get back into a learning environment like that and how I was going to manage that and the family and kind of keep all these balls up in the air kind of running smoothly. But as soon as I took my first lesson, um, which was hard. I mean, I, I got to admit, I wanted to back out so many times. I thought, yeah. this is crazy. I'm too old for this. Or there's no, <laughs> this is like, just people are going to look at me like I'm crazy. This, you know, 40 something year old woman coming in here to take lessons. But I persevered and went in, took the lesson. We had kind of some iffy weather. Oh, but that's was- Ohio for you, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There were some pop-up thunderstorms. It was in the middle of uh, summer, but I was undeterred. I was like, okay, I don't care. That's fine. We'll just dodge them. I think my instructor was <laughs> probably trying to get out of it, and probably, <laughs> but I wouldn't let him. It's like, no, nah, dude, we're doing this, man. I'm paying for you. You need the hours. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So we actually wound up landing at a small airport. Um, we couldn't make it back because the thunderstorms were starting to surround us. So we had to land and kind of sit it out for a little bit. But that was fun. Um, you know, it was a good experience landing at, at a different airport. Yeah. And the whole general aviation community um, is just fascinating to me. Ever since I started flying, I've, I've just become like an addict. And <laughs> want to the fall. aviation bug has hit you hard. Yes. Want to yeah. learn more. Want to talk to more pilots. Want to, you know, just soak up all the information on yeah. aviation that I possibly can. Absolutely. I think that it's it's cool that you you kind of brought up the fact that it's like you didn't like you ran your family you're the you're a mom you were doing all this stuff for your family but you never really took the time for yourself to do what you wanted to do and then you finally found aviation and you're like all right I made this goal in 1999 before computers are really a thing and <laughs> we're yeah. gonna make this happen and uh, uh-huh. I'm I think that's so cool that you went back and did it because. I think a lot of people can just be like, no, like I'm too old. It's like, there's no point in me doing this or no one else is doing like, like you said earlier, it's like you're 40, you're a mom. It's like, who, who's done this? So I think it's really cool that you're out there. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there are other people as well, but your story can kind of tell those people that, Hey, this is possible. Hey, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can still be a private pilot. You can do this. If you're a female, if you're a mom, if you have kids, if you're a husband or like all this stuff, it's like, you can do it. So I think it's really cool that you're out there doing it. Yeah, that's one one of the things that uh, I guess inspired me to start the Fly Girl. Once yeah. I got gotten into it, I wanted to encourage other women to get into it, and I think it's just a it just boosted my confidence majorly. It yeah. changed, it gave me a real sense of identity, and it challenged me. I, I accomplished things that I wasn't sure I could accomplish, <laughs> and um. It opened my eyes to the possibilities of maybe a career in aviation. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, I've got, I'm not like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not close to dying yet. Hopefully <laughs> I've got some time. So <laughs> hopefully, you know, who knows where it will lead. I've, right. I've gotten big into the attending the air shows, which yeah. I had always enjoyed anyway, but uh, volunteering with the commemorative air force. I've been, I love the warbird community. I love um, pushing that history, I think that's important too mm-hmm. to keep that alive. And I would love to learn to fly a warbird. I mean, that's there kind of go. on my unwritten bucket list, I guess. Um, but I don't, I don't know where it's going to go. But I really wanted to to reach out to women, and I was looking for some cute clothes to like. I'm a female <laughs> pilot, kind of thing. Yeah, why thought, is all these manly just, clothes? I don't want this stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or they're like these kind of boxy t-shirts that yeah. weren't really you know, um, stylish. So I kind of came up, worked with someone to come up with a, a logo and, um, printed it on some t-shirts and then sporties was very supportive and approached their catalog division about selling the products and offering the products. And they 
we're like, yeah, we'll, we'll try it. Let's do it. So I started that. And at the same time, I thought, okay, well, what's another barrier to keep, keep women from flying? And that would be money. <laughs> yeah. It's a barrier for a lot of people. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, it's a barrier for everyone, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and I know, I mean, I know women and I know men too, but in particular, I can identify with women. They, right. it's hard to justify spending a lot of money on yourself um, for such an expensive hobby and, or training. I mean, it's, it's, expensive. So I thought, well, if I can provide some financial assistance, then that would be another way to get women into it. And uh, self-funded the first scholarship, decided with these products, you know, this is all developing as I'm going. I don't really have a a plan in the beginning. It just kind of... I can relate to that. (laughs) Right. It just kind of unfolds. And I just kind of see what... What avenues come up and what what pops up and what doesn't work and kind of just go from there. Yes. So I decided with uh, Sporties that the products that I sold, the money that I made from those products would go directly to funding future scholarships. And that would just, like I wasn't trying, and I'm still not trying to get rich off these products. It's really about raising money. And um, about a month ago, I decided, so this has been going on for about two years, so selling the products, and I don't make a lot of money off the products. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, I, I can probably relate to that. You don't make that much money off of clothes or hats or anything no. like that. No, I mean, I'm fortunate because Sporties really has um, all the logistics and um, the connections with mm-hmm. the distributors and the you know suppliers. So I didn't have to do all of that. Um, at the same time, they could stop selling my products anytime. I right. have no idea. You know? <laughs> what how long it's going to last please don't but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll do, please don't yeah. um, so you know i don't make a lot of money off the products but uh someone had mentioned doing this um fundraiser fund a fly girl campaign and at first i was like oh no I'm, i don't know if i want to ask people for money directly that's just you know i don't know and but i was like okay we'll do it we'll try it we'll We'll have like a two week campaign and on social media, basically ran this campaign, fund a fly girl. And my goal was to raise Mm $2,500. Well, I made that in two days. Oh, snap. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And at first my friends were like, you should make it 5,000. I thought, no, there's no way. Cause what if I fail? You know, this is going to be embarrassing if I don't make it and no way. Well, when I made that, I thought, Oh gosh, should I let people know I've made it or should I just like continue yeah. taking money in? Uh, I don't want to be like greedy, but I would love to see, you know, maybe I can do two scholarships and yeah. raise that much more. So I kept it going the whole time and wound up raising over $16,000. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. I was, it, <laughs> it just, it was amazing. Yeah. And I thought, this is what I love. I love doing this. Um, Fundraising, I love being able to, you know, raise money with the products or whatever to get um, some help, financial assistance to women and and really encourage them. And social media is great for encouraging um, females in any avenue. Really, I've connected with so many pilots on there. It's what I love about social media. You can just connect with people all over the world. Absolutely. The aviation Instagram community is one of the best. Obviously we're biased and when we say that, but I mean, I've met so many cool people. I've been able to meet up with other pilots in different countries. I've been able to meet up with just some of my, some of my better friends right now. I've actually haven't ever met in real life. So it's like, I I just know them from these personalities that they have on Instagram, but it's really cool to see. And I think that what we're doing a better job now for the community is kind of showing the full spectrum of what it is to be a pilot. Cause I think before it was just like, Hey, I'm a pilot. It's awesome. And now people are starting to get a little more real, which I think was missing before, but yeah, the aviation community is amazing. I do love it. And I've met a lot of people, you know, like you said, through like Instagram, if I say I'm going to be at this air show um, and they'll send me a message. I'm going to be there. And it's like, okay, well, let's meet. Yeah, and you meet them in go. person. And it's like, you already know each other. Yeah. All you those know? Instagram DMs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, awesome. just the, it's a great way to connect. And with just a picture, I yeah. mean, I love Instagram. That's probably my favorite <laughs> um, way because you just show a picture and a picture can say a lot. Yeah. You know, what you're doing, what you're going through. It can be a quote. It can be the scenery. It can be of an airplane. And you know, probably where that person is training, what, you know, if they're working on instrument training, you just know, it's just really cool. That is cool. 
it's a good way to connect for sure. Absolutely. I want to take it back a little bit to more of your training and talk about that a little bit. I mean, okay. you mentioned that it, well, you're very nervous when you started out. It's kind of like who, like, what am I doing? Was there anything else that was holding you back at all? Like, was, uh, was it just the unknown oh, of gosh. what you're getting into? Um, no, I really didn't think I was smart enough to do it. Yeah. I thought, um, that you, it was, I don't know if it was something that I heard or, um, that you need to be really good at math and <laughs> well, I, I would not be a pilot. Like I was not good at math. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and so that kind of deterred me for a long time. I thought, gosh, especially if I hadn't been in school in a long time, I'd yeah. lost so many of the skills and um, remembering how to do certain calculations. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this. And, um, but I had to try, I just couldn't yeah. like not try. And actually, once I, you know, started getting through the privates, I was like, gosh, it's really, it's really not that bad. I mean, mm-hmm. I have a calculator. It's yeah, like, I know. <laughs> it's, the worst you have to do is interpolate a couple numbers and say, that's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's really good. not that bad. It's no. like, okay. That's yeah, so funny. Every lesson you, I feel like you gain a little bit of confidence with every lesson. Yeah. And it seems like the next lesson, okay, well, the next one, I, if I can do this, then I can probably do the next one too. Yeah. I'd like to think that your, your kind of, your training is always building upon itself. So they start you out with kind of the basics and then you just build on top of that. And every time you master something, then it's time to move on to something else. And so they never just like, I mean, some people might, but they don't normally throw you to the wolves with complex equations and stuff like yeah, that. Right. So it's, it's something that, Anyone can do. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, there's not that much math that's that hard. It's just like following charts and just kind of having some yeah. kind of understanding of what's going on. It's so, it's so cool though. Like the charts. I love the charts <laughs> and, and the weather. Yeah. You know, when we first started talking about the weather, I thought there's no way I'm going to get all this. And now I know so much more about weather than so many people. <laughs> and they come to me asking about the weather and you're using all these terms. Like when I first would, started training. I was like, what are they talking about? Yeah. I don't know what it means. And now I'm using them. And it's funny because it's like, oh my gosh, I sound like those pilots when I first started <laughs> training. <laughs> I'm a pi- I got the pilot lingo down. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. awesome. What, so, what, oh, yeah, sorry, through, through the private yeah. and my private um, license. I don't remember how many hours I was in no hurry. And yeah. um, I think it took me maybe a year maybe nine months, something like that, and directly went into the instrument training. Okay. Uh, after I actually, towards the end of my private, I decided to buy an airplane. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So I bought a, uh, I was training in a Cessna 172, yeah. and I decided to try something a little different and get a low wing, so I bought a Piper Archer. Nice. And um, I've had that for a couple years. I, I really wanted to be able to accrue time because... The older you are, the more you feel like you're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I want to be able to fly whenever I want to yeah. and not worry about reserving a plane. Just have it there ready for me to to take off. Plus, I have family in Tennessee and I wanted to be able to go back and forth up down there and visit pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. What so was, um, what, what yeah, would you ahead. say is the, so obviously a lot of students, like they're always told some, some people will be like, Hey, the best thing you can do is buy a 152 and go fly as much as you can. It's like, don't limit yourself with flight schools and like, just go buy a plane for as the cheapest one that's in the best condition and fly it. Um, sounds kind of like, I don't know how, like obviously the cheapest, but you, you did that, you bought a plane and what would, would you recommend that for everyone? Or do you think that's only right for some people? No, I would, I would recommend it. I mean, I think it's great. Um, for time building and, and you really learn a lot. Like I learned a lot just through the whole buying process. Yeah. Um, it's only going to expand your knowledge of things in aviation when you go through that process. And it's really nice to be able to like, just go in it and fly yeah. when the weather's nice. It kind of stinks if, um, you know, the, all the, I mean, sporties has planes, but they also have a lot of students. So <laughs> on a nice day, the chances of you probably renting a plane are probably pretty slim and getting, you know, at the exact time that you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it just depends on your, on your budget. I know you can buy uh, a decent airplane a lot cheaper than what people think you can. Right. I even um, know that. And I'm still yeah. like, man, I could never afford an airplane. It's like, I've, I've seen people buy airplanes. I've talked to people that have bought airplanes and, they're not millionaires. They're not making a bajillion dollars. They are probably making the same amount of money as me and they make it work. So it's like, clearly you can do it. 
But I think it's just like a whole thing of you're buying an airplane. Like people are like all the expenses yeah, that come it's with weird, it. It's it? yeah, it's like I own an airplane. Like it's like just I something I can't wrap airplane. my. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I own a freaking airplane. <laughs> it's like I can't yeah. wrap my mind around the fact that it's actually a, a possibility. So I, I think that's cool that you went down that route and you you recommend that for people when they're they're doing it because you can find decent airplanes for a decent price. You can. Uh, I will say, you know. I don't think the expense was the monthly expense was um, much more than what I would be spending if I was renting a plane flying as much as I was flying. So yeah. in three years, not quite three years, I have a little over 600 hours. Oh, cool. I wouldn't have that if I didn't have my own plane. Because I know I think about 400 of that, maybe about 350 was in my airplane. Yeah. Um, just flying for fun. And I do a lot of cross country trips. I love to go to new places. Um, and I think you learn a lot by doing that. I don't know if you could do that with a school rental plane. Take it. I mean, I go out of state. I've mm-hmm. gone to Arizona. I've gone up to North Carolina. I've gone to Florida, Texas. You can't necessarily do that so easily with a rental. No. Um, but the big expenses are like I've got my annuals coming up and I'm not looking forward to that. I was say, it's making me cringe <laughs> and I don't even own the airplane. So, <laughs> no, it's. It's going to be expensive. Uh, and, um, you know, there are times when I think, oh, I'm going to sell it and maybe join a club or maybe go in and buy a plane with someone because of those big expenses. I've got to do the ADSB thing. I haven't done that yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's another kind of expense that I'm going to have to start thinking about, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, yeah. there's a lot of expenses that come with buying an airplane. And I think that's, there is, yeah. that's a thing that kind of holds me back. But like you said, there, there's a lot of benefits to owning an airplane too. It's kind of like what you said, you get to choose when you want to go fly it. You get to choose how much money you're going to put away for all this stuff. Like you get to choose your rate. You get to choose where you're going to buy fuel when you want to go, where you're going to go, all that stuff. So yeah. it offers a lot of freedoms that were kind of that I mean, we what, we come to we become pilots because we love the freedom of being able to do all that kind of stuff, you know. So that's just another tool that you can have to help you out. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. If, if you can afford it, yeah, yeah, I would say. What was um What was your support system like when you're doing flying? What What was your family like? What was your husband like? Where they're like, "Dang, mom, you're crazy. What are you doing?" Or they're like, "Yeah, go, mom. This is awesome." Oh gosh. Um. Hmm. Will you be editing this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I'm gonna leave. Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh, I would say, you know, it, it was a big change mm-hmm. for sure. Um, it changed a lot of our family dynamic because I was studying and I had other things I was doing in the evening. Some of the things that I was doing before that I didn't really like to do, like cooking dinners every night. <laughs> and a lot of that got cut out and the kids had to be a little more self-sufficient. Um, which in a way I think is good. Um, you know, in a way, I don't know if it was necessarily balanced because I'm kind of like one of these people that once I jump into something, I'm just laser focused yeah. and um, everything else has to kind of adjust. <laughs> so I can be <laughs> insensitive, I'd say sometimes yeah. to other people's needs um, when I, when I have something um, laser focused for me for, my boys, you know, I don't know. They think it's normal, which is really weird. Cause <laughs> when they tell cool, their though. friends yeah. I'm flying, I'm, she's gone flying. They're like, what? <laughs> and I say, see, I told you I was cool. Yeah. You just don't believe me. I know. <laughs> it's like, I told you I was a cool mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and they don't fly with me that much. They've been uh, a little bit, but they're so into hanging out with their friends, yeah. and teenagers and um, playing Fortnite. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I love that. All right. So you got your private, you went into your instrument training now. Are you an instrument rated pilot or are you still working I on that? Am. Nice. No, I'm instrument rated. Everyone that I've talked to has said the instrument has probably been the toughest kind of rating that they've got. Would you agree? Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> what was the struggle for yes. you? Well, it's just so very different. Yeah. It's so precise. And, um, you know, when you get into flying, you're you're looking out the window and it's all very like, oh, this is so peaceful. And so, you know, just kind of, Flittering around. Um, and with the instrument, I don't know, everything is so precise and you have to, there's so many different things going on at one time. It's stressful, yeah. I feel like. What, what what kind of made it all click? Um, hmm. That's a good question. 
because it didn't for a while yeah. and I hated it <laughs> for a long time. You're not alone I in that. I promise switch, you that. Switch instructors at one point. Um, and I'd say that helped. I liked my instructor before, but I think we just got really too, too, um, I don't know if well acquainted is the word, but we were like, buddies and yeah. i start kind of stopped listening to him somewhat <laughs> you lost like, kind of the, like him. teacher to, to student relationship yeah, like, he's more like my brother yeah. it's like what you know, stop stop i know what i'm doing get out of here yeah. do. <laughs> stop, <laughs> like, stop well, doing your job yeah. Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so once i switched i think it made me kind of refocus and um and then it was like okay i'm just ready to get done with this so let's get this done and towards the end and even more recently, when I've done approaches mm-hmm. in different airports, I think when I was doing the same ones over and over again, it was so monotonous. And so, you know, you go to the same airports and I thought, this is just starting to get on, on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> but when I went to different airports and started doing it, it was like a real challenge yeah. and it was a real thrill to do it and be like, oh my gosh. There, I did it. There it is right there. And everyone's so different. And you're like, I can do that. If I can do that one, then I can do a different airport and I can do a different airport. And then it got to be really cool. And I was like, I really like this actually more so than I thought I did. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I mean, instrument is, is crazy. It's the only way I kind of explain it. And I've talked about this before in most of my podcasts. It's just kind of, you have to wait for that moment of like that aha moment and it happens for everyone differently. So it just depends on, like you said, you had to switch your instructor and that's awesome that you recognize that because a lot of people don't recognize that and they just stick with that same instructor and then you, you might get aggravated. You might kind of lose that love for aviation and it's easy to put it off. But instrument is really something that you have to kind of go after and you can't become complacent, if that makes sense. You have to continue to fly, continue to push yourself and continue to try because it's a lot of information. It's completely different than the stuff that you just learned and you got to figure out a way to to, to learn it. And uh, I mean, uh, yeah. you, a lot of people try to cram it in. So you got to learn it pretty quick, depending on your schedule and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's a lot. But actually, I, I'd say I really started loving it when I started after I got my license, yeah. I would say the rating. Then I would say that's when I really started liking it a lot because I was doing these approaches yeah. at different airports. It's so much fun to fly instrument. I love flying instrument approaches and the company that I fly for, we fly pretty much anywhere. So I fly IFR minimums in the mountains. I fly minimums pretty much everywhere. I've flown an approach down a min. Wow. So it's, it's definitely yeah. cool. And it's also cool. One of my favorite things is when you take off at an airport and you're climbing through and then all of a sudden you bust out of the clouds and it's just as clear as possible. You're surfing on oh top gosh, and the yeah. sun's shining and it's beautiful outside because you just cleared all the nasty weather. There, so that's awesome. But on the, yeah. on the other side of that, it's sometimes it sucks when you're descending down. You're like, oh, this is going to get really bumpy. <laughs> so yeah. there, there's definitely two sides of that. But instrument flying is amazing. And I highly recommend everyone get it. I agree. Totally. Are you planning on getting a commercial or do you have your commercial? I have my commercial. Okay, look at you. Yes, I got my commercial. Uh, commercial was like a piece of cake. Same. <laughs> commercial was instrument. so much fun for me. It just like, it was just, I don't know. I liked the, the, some of the maneuvers and it was just a lot easier. I think it's because you just yeah. feel comfortable flying the plane. Probably so. Yeah. You've really, you've gone through like everything you yeah. can possibly go through with the plane and gotten a real feel for it. And I'd say it probably maybe more so if you're able to fly with, on this, in the same plane at your school, that's great. But because I was flying this, my plane, you know, really get to know my plane and how it feels. And I know when something's not feeling right or it's not doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And you, you can do those steep turns Mm -hmm. and you just, you have a feel for it. And I really enjoyed the commercial quite a bit. It was fun. What was your favorite thing about commercial favorite kind of, was it like a specific training, like a maneuver that you did or just be doing all these cross countries? What did you love most about it? Well, what I least (laughs) <laughs> like that was the um eights on pylons yes oh those are the dumbest like that's the fact that you're being tested that. on that yeah yes at such a hard time with yeah. that and i was so stressed about it on my check ride and um actually i only had to do like maybe a third of yeah. it like i started it i did like one turn he was like okay that's good <laughs> i was like oh my god i was so stressed about this one like maneuver the whole time and I barely <laughs> even did a whole one. That's crazy. My guy, um, my DP made me do the whole thing. And I was like, uh, he forgot about it on the check ride. Then all of a sudden we were getting ready to land. He's, oh, we have to do eights on pylons. I was like, no, I don't want to. Yeah. So we did those. We I love the in. power off one eight. Yeah. Those are fun. Those are fun. Definitely. Yeah. I liked trying to figure out how to get the plane, you know, uh, making the adjustments and everything to get it where you wanted it to go. That was fun. That's a challenge. That's, probably yeah, that's my a favorite. lot of fun. 
I like yeah. the um, lazy eights, but my instructor and I did crazy eights. So I had to make sure my check ride that I didn't try to go too crazy on the lazy oh. eights. I didn't want to scare him at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that crazy about the lazy oh, eights. Really? I don't know why. Because there was no, I think it was because there's no like exact targets. Yeah. You know, at each point, uh, wasn't there weren't these specifications that you knew you needed to hit. That's true. So I had a hard time feeling that, I guess. Um, the Shondells weren't as bad, but, um, no, but my least favorite was definitely the eights on pylons. Yeah, the eights on pylons are the worst. It's always bumpy. It's always bumpy at that like level yeah. where you're flying, you know, and not smooth. And I, I just don't like for that. For me, at all. it was just, it was tough for me to pick. I always wanted to pick the two perfect points and then I'd just be so focused on those points. And then maybe I look down, I forget where the point was. And it's like, crap, I could really oh, just fail yeah. my check ride because I didn't. Right go to the point that I specifically like, it's like, yeah. this is stupid. Like, come on. Or you pick one, they're, the two are too close yeah. or they're too far. And you're like, Oh goodness. Yeah. yeah. Like, Dang it. <laughs> 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 yeah. For the power off one eighties, it was a lot of fun because my instructor and I would always have competitions toward the end. And we would just go up and do like, we'd each do three and whoever had the best one would win. Like, I don't know, like a, we'd buy someone a beer or we'd, the other person would buy a beer awesome. or a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich and stuff like that. I'm from the yeah. South too. So it's all about Chick-fil-A. So yes. it's a, uh, Right. Yeah, one time I got cut off by Chick Fil A's jet, and they felt bad oh. for us, and they gave us like free Chick Fil A for a week, like for they gave us oh like seven Chick Fil A cards, and I was like, all right, cool, <laughs> thank That's you. Awesome. I know it was crazy. They're kind of jerks for cutting us off, but I don't think they really saw us. They're just focused on landing. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, sometimes I stop by. We have a Chick Fil A on the way to our little airport, and sometimes I stop by there and pick up some sandwiches or chicken and biscuits for some of the guys that work in the FBI. You're there. Nice. You're making me hungry just thinking about that right now. I know. Me too. <laughs> Good thing it's not Sunday. <laughs> I can go get my Chick Fil A fix on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, you have private, commercial, and instrument done. Is there anything else we want to do? Are you going to stop there? Uh, you got done ATP. My multi okay. Nice. Did my multi-engine, and um, that was fun. I went to Florida to do that cool. in Pensacola. Where, why did you uh, um, go to Florida to do it? Why didn't you go up in Sporties? I just really wanted to get out of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Florida. Uh, amen. <laughs> I uh, I grew up in North Carolina. I went to school at Ohio State. Did some of my flying at Ohio State. Oh, and the okay, weather in yeah. the Midwest is the worst, absolute yeah. worst, especially for flying. In the winter time, you can't yeah. fly. It's too cold. The icing levels, and in the summer, spring, and right. fall, there's thunderstorms. There's always a low level of clouds. It's just literally the worst. <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah. smart. I actually went in February, so it was like, okay, I think I'm going to go in to Florida and do this training. Yeah. Um, did it at a school down there. Anyway, I loved it. It was so fun. I loved, I had like a Piper Seminole we were flying yeah. and just so much more power than what I was used to. Nothing compared yeah. to a jet, but no. it was like the next level for me, you know? Yeah, I remember yeah, when I was, so I did my 170 private pilot instrument training in a 172 and then I went to a Piper Aero. Even going from an A to a 172 to an Aero, I was like, dang, this is a real plane. Like I'm flying a powerful yeah. plane. And then I went from my yeah. Aero to, how did I fly? An Aztec, no, not an Aztec, a Sim, no, what was it? I can't even remember now. Uh, well, whatever multi-engine plane I went into, I'm drawing a blank, yeah. but, and then I was like, oh my gosh, now I'm flying a real plane. Like, this is so cool. I got two I engines. <laughs> it's like, you just can, it was it, so different. So different. Climbing at like, what, 2,000, 2,500 yeah. feet a minute. It's like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Wow. Yeah. It was super fun. Um, and I actually thought about buying a multi-engine okay. at one point. I don't know. That's still in the back of my head. Like I might want to do that, but I would love to get my tailwheel endorsement. Yes, That's something be fun. I'd like to do. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, I'd love to do, you know, the seaplane, um, get an endorsement for that. I don't even know why, because it's like, when would I ever use it? I don't know. <laughs> but you need to say Especially you have it, though. Cool. Yeah, you need, to fly an, <laughs> yeah. you need to fly one of those Icon airplanes, an A5, you know, go up and take it out. So you never know when that opportunity will come. You need it. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So you pretty um, much want every every kind of rating you can I get. Do. Yeah. So you weren't kidding when you said to. when you got into this, it's like it just kind of took over your life and you're like, I need it, more. It <laughs> yes. Um, and all these, like my list just keeps getting yeah. longer and longer. I, <laughs> I want to do aerobatics. Oh, dang. I'd love to do that. Did you ever learn to do no, that? No. See, I hate roller coasters. So I'm oh. just like... I don't know. I, I want to do it, but I don't like I say, like I, yeah. it's like jumping out of airplane. I want to skydive, but I hate that feeling that comes in your stomach. So it's, it's like, I just need to go do it. Yeah. Uh, I've been skydiving once. Yeah. Um, and I would definitely recommend it. I'll probably never do it again because it was <laughs> the scariest thing ever. But Falling out <laughs> you of the can sky. do that. You yeah. can do like anything. Yeah. For sure. That's cool. Um, 
I just started my CFI training oh, cool. yesterday. Actually. Congrats. Uh, that is something I never yeah. wanted to do. So you are much better than I am. Well, I really don't know if I want to do it or not. Yeah. I just thought people say, say you should try it. You should do it. You'll become a better pilot. And I would like to um, see what it's like to teach other students because I love to talk about aviation. So I thought, well, maybe this is, this will be my thing. I don't know. We'll try it and see. And if I don't like it, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I'll gain, I'm going to gain more hours yeah. flying. Um, if I don't like it, then I just stopped doing yeah. it. I mean, yeah. I mean, what's the, like you said, what's the worst that could happen? You're going to end up with your CFI. Oh no, dang it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, exactly. yeah, darn, I have another rating. Oh no. <laughs> I yeah. think it's cool though, because I mean, I, I, looking back on it, I wish I would have gotten it just because I would love to teach my kids how to fly one day or just, I think it'd be cool to go to just to help give back and go to go help people learn how to fly because every CFI teaches in a different way. So you don't know your style might be very helpful for a certain student that doesn't get it with a certain instructor. You know, it's kind of like you said, you switched instructor. Instructors. Maybe someone needs to yeah. switch instructors and they need to have you as their CFI. So it's definitely something that people should look into to see if that's something they want to do. Sure. Well, me being really interested in, in getting other women into it, I've flown a few young Eagles flights and cool. had some had some girls on the flights. But I just thought, well, this may be another way for me to really get women into it. If there's a woman instructor, maybe they would be more apt to to try yeah. it, you know, what's the, so let's talk about that. What's the best way to get more women in aviation. Do you think it's to see more successful female pilots out there? Does that kind of like strike up like the girl power? Like, Oh man, if she's doing it, I can do it type thing. Or do you think, I, I do think yeah, so. I think, and I think social media makes that possible. I would agree. You can see. Yeah. What other women are, are doing and it makes you see, well, Hey, if they can do that, that, then I can do that. And there's so many you know, YouTube videos on how you get funding for, for, you know, scholarships and things like that. There's so many different things you can use resources to help you figure out a way to make it happen. Absolutely. And I, I can honestly, and a hundred percent, I'd say this is that there, like you can be a pilot, you can be a female pilot, you can be a male pilot. There's like, there's no difference in skills. You can be just as good as every other guy out there. So I don't want anyone to ever think that they can't be a pilot or they can't be as good as that person. It's like, it's, I know there are female pilots out there that are better pilots than I am. So I, mean, I don't want I've anyone heard to, that before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've heard that female pilots true, are better than me. I have heard that. <laughs> well, I've heard know <laughs> I'm just that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you fly like, yeah, but I'm sure no, you're good. I'm just kidding. Um, someone had told me that they feel like women are better pilots than men. They've flown with men and women, but I don't know if that's yeah. true. You know, there's, I'm sure that There's each each pilots. set female pilots and male pilots have their own good pilots and have their own bad pilots. So it depends on who kind of your your sample that you have. So how did you earn your hours if you weren't a CFI? I did aerial survey. So I flew aerial survey. Okay. I flew in a 206 and I flew an Aztec, uh 310, an Aero Commander. And then I went to fly single pilot freight. If I flew a Pilatus for 2000 hours and I, cool. yeah, I was awful. Yeah, it was, oh, it was? Yeah, oh, it was fine. It, I mean, the plot is was amazing, but it was just the fact of yeah. I was on call 24 seven for 10 days in a row and I would get the call. Say I'd wake up at nine. I was on call the whole day. I'd try to go to bed at 11. I'd get called out at one thirty in the morning to go have a 14 hour duty day with like an hour of uh -huh. sleep. So it was just kind of, it was very good for what I needed it for. It was very good for me to build time. But as soon as I got the time, I was like, all right, I need to get out of here as soon as possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that it, this, there are other routes in CFI. So that's I took the other route just because I knew I didn't want to be a teacher. I knew that I just wanted to get my hours as fast as possible and kind of start my career. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long have How long have you been flying? I started my flying in 2010. I okay. did my private pilot license at Ohio State. I also played football there. So I tried to balance yeah. that for a while and it just uh -huh. didn't work out. <laughs> Football is very demanding, as you might imagine. Yes. And so I yeah. went from, I went back to my hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina, and I flew down there at a airport called Monroe. And I did all my training down there in about a year at a part 61 school. Okay. Yeah. And I just huh. knocked it out. Did you know Sam, Sam Hubber? I uh, don't. Maybe. I don't he, know. He was, he played football at Ohio State and he actually. Oh, Sam Hubbard. Yeah. He, he came, yeah. um, he was after I was. So after you, I played yeah. from 2009 to 2012. And I think he came a year or two after me. After. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, yeah. I thought you were talking aviation, Sam Hubbard. I was like, oh no, I definitely know no, the other sorry. Sam Hubbard. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I think he plays for the Bengals <laughs> I now. Years right? on you there. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Let's go back and talk about Fly Girl and just tell me the strides that you've made in making this company and this LLC and how you've been able to help and who you've been able to help. Okay. Well, um, 
gosh, I say, um, way too much. <laughs> so fly girl, the, uh, nonprofit is fly foundation. So the money that I make goes into fly foundation. Mm-hmm. It's a um, 501 C three. And I would say I run a nonprofit organization. Yeah. Basically I'm not um, making money off of it. Uh, the first scholarship I gave was to a young girl, Megan, who was a career changer. She was had actually started a career in, in like travel and decided she wouldn't be a pilot. She's now she's actually an instructor at Sporties now oh, cool. and is she went through her writings so fast. She's she's very, very talented pilot. Um, since then, I would say on social media, you know, I've, it's been I don't know if Met has had the biggest impact. But connecting others, and I do like videos, like YouTube videos, and I interview other women in aviation. I write blogs. I really like to share what other women are doing in aviation. You know, whether you're a pilot or not a pilot, mm-hmm. there's things that you could do. People at air shows, you know, people that work the air shows, people that are in air traffic control. There's just so many different parts of aviation that I really like to connect all those people together. I love to find out, oh, hey, this girl lives in Florida. Oh, I know someone else that lives in Florida. Let me connect you <laughs> yeah. two so y'all can help each other, exactly. you know? Um, that's, and the, I mean, it's just been a real huge thing for me personally. I've grown so much um, feeling like, you know, people come up to me, they recognize me at events or they, they say things about how their posts or my posts have really inspired them and, that means a lot to me because I want people to push themselves. I want them to see what they're capable of. I want them to expand and and go for things. So, you know, that's as far as fly girl. I mean, raising that that amount of money the last I guess that was last month was huge Amazing. and just makes me you know, I got a couple of corporate sponsors that were that donated, which I'd never really thought about doing so it's kind of opened my eyes into hey i can actually maybe try to get more corporate sponsors and make this even bigger and give out more and so that's i'm really really into that um of course i'm into the cfi training i want to be a pilot and fly professionally but i also have this nonprofit that i love Mm -hmm. that i want to keep keep going as well what is um so it's uh, this is a two-part question we'll just start with you this time what is your goal of flying is uh do you want to fly for a company maybe one day or do you just want to go fly for fun and fly whenever you want to both, both? so w- <laughs> would you say like you want to be like a regional pilot maybe or do you think you want to do like yeah, yeah maybe i don't know you know I, and i really this frustrates people so much when i don't <laughs> have an exact goal yeah. but Things a lot since three years ago have just changed. Mm-hmm. And I'm open to, you know, it depends on the people I meet that say, hey, you could do this. And let me, and I think, oh, well, okay, I could do that. And wow, I didn't know this was possible. So I'm, now I had this connection in like women in corporate aviation. Yeah. Or um, I think ideally I would love to fly. Of course, I want to fly a jet. I mean, who they're, doesn't want to fly a jet? They're pretty cool. I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun flying jets. <laughs> so I would love to be able to fly a jet probably for like a corporation. Yeah. Maybe that means I go to a regional airline to gain some experience and time. I don't know. I'm open to whatever. Right now, I'm just focused on at least getting near those 1,500 hours to yeah. see. Just to just have that's, that opportunity, right? Yeah. yeah that's right. awesome. Well, all right, now the second part of that question is what's the future of Fly Girl? What is kind of what are your goals for that? Do you have goals for that? Because I know before you kind of said that you're just kind of going with the going with the flow of things. But do you have like a kind of an idea of where you'd want it to go? Uh, I put a lot of time into yeah. it right now. Um, there's a lot of energy, you know, posting on social media. It takes time. You got to do that several times a day. You've got, um, you know, I'm learning how to use these different tools like schedulers yeah. and things like that. Um, if I become like a full-time pilot, I don't want to let fly girl go. I still, and I feel like I can, I'm still going to devote my energy to raising money for the scholarships. If sporties decides not to sell my shirts anymore, then I will find another way to sell the shirts because I think people like them and, um, it doesn't have to, it doesn't require a lot to, to find them. So I'm just not going to make a lot of money off of them, but not hard to have them made. Um, my main goal would be to be able to, to continue to fundraise and be able to continue to give scholarships away 
if that's the only thing, you know, I love to write the blogs yeah. on the website. I love to do the YouTube stuff, but the main thing is raising money and being able to give money to some women. So I've given three scholarships nice. away. That's awesome. today, and that is, that's great. And I'm, I still, you know, talk to these people. I have a good relationship with these people. I meet so many people through them that, um, that's been really meaningful to me. That's awesome. That was really cool. When is your next scholarship? Do you have that one planned out yet? I do not. Um, cause I just gave away <laughs> two. So, um, people are asking, <laughs> <laughs> come on, when am I going to get my money? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, usually I think we're going to do one in the fall and sporties and I are working out, um, a partnership yeah. where, um, we can work together to hopefully come up with one to get at the fly girl for the fall. Really, it was initially going to be one per year, and I gave away two this year. That's awesome. Uh, a, a lot of that was because of that Fun to Fly Girl campaign. I wouldn't have been able to do that. But there are other organizations like Women in Corporate Aviation, uh, MBAA, that I'd like to be able to have a little scholarship offering through those yeah. organizations as well. So I'm trying to think through that i really need to i mean because of this large amount of money i mean it may not be large to like <laughs> it sounds like a lot to me it. so yeah i got you but yeah. it's a lot to me yeah. i mean i'm just a one person operation that's awesome um then it's i gotta figure out how i'm gonna divvy this up and figure out come up with a plan each year i'll probably do another one you know every year i'll probably do a fun to fly girl campaign every year and that will be which is good because i don't have to 100 percent rely on what i make through sporties right. For sure. Because they could cut the cord any time. <laughs> so I need to have another way to raise money and knowing that people are willing to to donate to that. I know that I have still had the ability to to generate money for the scholarships through that means. Absolutely. Now, what is the process of a female pilot coming up and uh, applying for a scholarship or kind of what does the whole process look like from from them applying to them getting selected? Well, it was the last one was offered through Women in Aviation, and you would go to their website, uh, and there will be another one next year offered through Women in Aviation as well. There will also be one through Sporties, like I said, in the fall, and probably one through Women in Corporate Aviation and MBAA. Um, you can go to my website, uh, flygirlllc.com. There's my little plug. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. Plug yourself. Uh, yeah. You can always send me a message and ask me. There's a place to contact me and ask me when you know, the next deadline is or what the process is, who they can contact to apply. But last year, they went to the Women Aviation um, website. They filled out a form. Basically, I don't require a whole lot. I don't have a lot of stipulations. Some people do um, for their scholarships. But you write a small essay about your aviation history, your aviation goals, why you should you know get this scholarship. I do like to see or I like to know what kind of medical you've already received, mm -hmm. what how many hours you have, where you are in your training, a couple of personal references. And basically, so the first one, I had 22 applicants. Cool. This last one, I had 130. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's yeah. a big difference. <laughs> so I had to come up with a committee yeah. and divide those up so we could break it down a little bit and make it a little more manageable and kind of weeded out um a few you know you have to get kind of uh i don't know what the word is but i had to come up with some way to weed it out and the first one was if they have grammatical errors yeah that's it they're out um I, and I'd that be may be like heartless, <laughs> but you've got to come up with a way yeah. narrow it down and there's so many tools you can use today to check your grammarly? grammar and everything yeah. grammarly is a uh, save some lives yeah. <laughs> So that actually cut it down probably by a third. And then you just, I just read the essays and start to see what, who I can, who I have a connection with, if I can understand if they've gotten another scholarship that could possibly not be good because then I think, okay, they've already gotten one. Maybe I should look to someone that hasn't gotten right. one. Um, it's very subjective. I have to say. I mean, it's, it's um, your scholarship though, you know, it's kind of like you get to choose who, who's going to, it's, it's a, your brand. It's a lot to do with it. So I, I don't blame you. I'd like to see what they put into yeah. it so far. They put in their, some of their own, their own skin in the game, how they're funding it. Absolutely. Are they getting help from their parents? Are they getting loans? I mean, what, 
how are you doing this? Then that kind of fades into it a little bit as well. Um, what else do they, you know, if they're like my age when I started, then I definitely feel a little more um, <laughs> connection mm-hmm. with them. Cause I know what, how difficult that is to manage a family and to be able to juggle all that. I can identify with that. A young college person i know you have issues but you can take a nap kind of like whenever you want to <laughs> when you're in college i know i did that's hilarious you, you can take a nap whenever you want that's so yeah i mean you can it's true i did it all the time so i know i know of course yeah. we all did yeah. but so i kind of like yeah I, I don't and plus you have your parents help you and there's lots of loans for kids in college that they can get so i don't typically lean towards those um type of candidates yeah. Um, but that's kind of it. I mean, cool. yeah. Well, awesome. I, I love what you're doing. I love the fly girl concept. I love just helping get more women in aviation because I think that is something that needs to happen. I think that we need more women in aviation. It's just, it's a cool industry and it is definitely one that is more male dominant. And yeah. I, I mean, I would just love to see more women in aviation. I, I think that's really cool that you're going out there and you're, you're offering scholarships and you self funded the first one. I love that companies and corporations are kind of jumping on this and they're doing this. And I agree with you that I think that the Instagram community has really helped with people like Pilot Maria, Pilot Shanley, mm-hmm. all the, the yeah. pop, uh, fly lady, get jizzy. Oh, giz, I always say her name yes, wrong, but right. they, <laughs> she's going to kill me for saying that because we're really good friends, but <laughs> oh, she's like the one in the Bahamas or yeah, Caribbean or something. The Cayman right? Islands. Yeah. yeah. But those girls yes. are showing that it's possible and that you can do this and it doesn't matter. And you can be a freaking great pilot too. You can be better than the guys. So just go for it and try it. And I think that's really why cool. Do you, why do you think more women are? in aviation people ask me this all the time that's a good question i uh, i'm gonna ask you the same question afterwards but off the top of my head i think that it's more of just like it's always been an old man's club you know like i think and it's i think you've people always think that you have to go to the military or you have to have a family of aviation and then i think that a lot of well i don't want to say females but a lot of women were were told that it they can be a stewardess, but they can't fly. You know, they can go, mm-hmm. they can be a flight attendant, but flying's for guys. And I think that a lot of it is rests solely on the hands of us, of men in aviation and the fact that maybe we kind of deterred it. And I think that it's getting better now. As you said, I don't think, I think the pilot shortage has helped that because I think they're more like, yeah. Hey, we just need pilots, like come apply. And I'm not, I don't know if that's fixed the root cause of why there aren't more women in aviation, but it's definitely helping the path for more women to become in aviation. Yeah. I agree. I I don't really know either. People ask me that. And I I would say for me, I just felt like um, I'm going to get married Mm -hmm. and I'm going to have kids. So it seems like not a good choice for someone to be flying around because if my husband had a job that was going to be traveling a lot, well, I have to be able to be home. So it's going to take care of the kids. You know, I don't know. You always think of the man, man being the main breadwinner. So if he has to travel, you have to be home. So you're, for me, was like, I always felt like, oh, well, let's see what that person's going to wind up yeah. doing. And then maybe I can figure out what I'm going to do. Yeah. But um, I think it's really changed yes. a lot since I've, I mean, it's, I've been married for 20 years and I think it's, it's changed it a lot. Definitely More changed. women seeking what they really like. My wife is a know? good example of that. My wife's a badass. She's smarter than me. She's going to be more successful than me. So like, I'm all for it. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> I'll be the stay home dad. Yeah. It's like, it is what it is. Like, you. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be it's a very st- cultural thing yeah. as well. I mean, I think that's just changed over time Absolutely. when more women are kind of pushed to do what they love, which is good. They should, everyone should do yeah. what they love. Right. Which is awesome. Right. I agree. Well, cool. And I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm just thankful that you came on the podcast and before you go, I have a quick rapid fire section where I'm just going to ask you some aviation oh, related gosh. questions oh, God. Okay. and you have to keep the answer. No calculations. No calculations. You have to keep the answer <laughs> as short and as oh. quick as possible. You just say the first thing that comes to your mind. They're not too difficult. Oh. All right. All right. What is your favorite okay. airplane you've ever flown? Seminole. What is the ugliest airplane you've ever seen? Oh gosh. What was that thing I saw? Uh, Osprey, I guess it was called. It's a, <laughs> the Osprey? Yeah. All right. Yes. That's it. What is, let's see. What is one plane you've always wanted to fly? Uh, the PC 12. Ooh, ah, I love that plane. 
I flew, so we'll get on a little tangent, but I flew the third, the sixth, and the 10th oldest PC-12s ever made. So right off the line. Really? Yeah. Wow. So like 103, and they started in the 100. So the first one was 100 and the 101. So it was 103, 106, and 110. Yeah. yeah so I flew the old ones, but they're awesome planes. Yeah. All right. If you could fly with one other person in aviation, maybe it's someone that's been very important to your aviation career, just your life in general, who would that be? My dad. Okay. Um, let's see. What is your favorite airport you've ever flown into? I'd say Milwaukee. What's your least favorite airport you've ever flown into? <laughs> A little small town of Dixon, Tennessee. <laughs> Side note. I don't, I don't like think, that airport. I don't think anyone has ever said Milwaukee as their number one airport of choice. So <laughs> more power to you. The, there's significance to that. <laughs> right. That is, I was flying to Oshkosh. Yeah. This is my first time flying up to Oshkosh, and we we it was like the biggest airport I'd ever flown into, and it was at night, so it had all these lights. It was just very memorable. That's cool to me. All right, that makes more Plenty. sense. It's like Milwaukee's not really a destination airport for most people to say. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad Milwaukee's getting some love. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite kind of uh, geography to fly over? Would it be the mountains, the beaches? The planes. Oh, no, I hate the mountains. You hate the mountains. I've done the mountains. And it was <laughs> terrible. It was terrifying. All right. No mountains. Uh, <laughs> I won't ask about mountains anymore. The beach, the for beach, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. The beach is awesome. What is one kind of flying accessory you always have to have on you? It could be like sunglasses, a, a Garmin watch, a four flight with an iPad with four flight on it. What would it be? Definitely my, my iPad with four yeah, flight. Four flight is just like the ultimate game changer. It's crazy. I, I would die if I didn't have it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What's your favorite airline? Delta. Piper or Cessna? Piper. What is your favorite airport food? So you're connecting, you got like an hour to kill. What what kind of food do you go for? Probably a burger and fries. Burger and fries. Nice. Mine's Chick-fil-A, 100%. <laughs> Every time. Or <laughs> Bojangles, especially when I'm going through Charlotte Airport, see a Bojangles. That's always good. You know, I think I've eaten a Bojangles one time. Oh, that breaks my heart. Bojangles is so good. <laughs> the seasoned fries. I don't. Oh, you know, yeah, it's because I don't really eat burgers and fries that much, so it's kind of a treat. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of like, oh, I'm at an airport, so that means I get to have burger yeah. and fries. Yeah. What's your um kind of favorite aviation experience you've had so far, aside from maybe the Milwaukee flight? Well, I did a long cross country flight with my uncle. We went out to a, we went really far. The main goal was to go out to Colorado and do mountain flying, yeah. and we did that. And we never also went again. To Arizona. <laughs> never again. That was. Well, I wouldn't say never no. again, but it was terrifying. Um, but I did learn a lot. And then we, I mean, we just did a whole loop. We went through so many different states, you know, uh, after Colorado, we went down through Arizona, through uh, Texas, Oklahoma. Um, so it, uh, Arkansas, I mean, it was just a great long, it was nearly uh, two weeks trip. Dang. Lots of flying, lots of different terrain, lots of different winds. It was, it was great. Yeah, it does sound like a lot of fun. It's uh, it's good to challenge yourself with that kind of stuff because the same flying can get kind of old after a while. Yeah, I agree. All right, those are all the questions you survived. Congratulations. Awesome. I know. I do Yay. have one more question actually for you though. Okay. But it is, so what is some, so you meet like a, let's say you're at Oshkosh, this year at Oshkosh and a 13 year old girl comes up to you and she's like, I really want to be a pilot, but I don't know how or I don't know why. I don't know how to start. What would you tell her to do? I would say... Well, I think it's really important, uh, and one of my main motivations that kept me going was connecting with other females that were interested in it. Mm -hmm. So for her, I would say you need a good network, you need a good support group, you need um, you know to reach out to, and so many women at the air shows, whether they're flying or not, know other people that are into it. Start following them on social media. Those that can really get you fired up yeah. and keep you motivated. When, especially when you're going through training or you're just learning. And for her, she could be exposed to so many different routes of things that she could learn. What kind of flying do you want to do? You you can see what all these other people are doing. So I would say start immersing yourself into the aviation community. I think it's a good one. That's what I would say. I'd say go to Instagram, go see all these badass female pilots that are killing it right now and that you can yeah. do it too. So I would agree. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. Well, Natalie, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun talking with you, and I look forward to seeing where Fly Girl is going to go and what's next for you. Guys. Thank you. No problem. It was really fun. Good, I'm glad. I appreciate I hope it. You enjoyed it. And that is a wrap of episode number 63 of the Pilot the Pilot podcast. 
Avi Nation, I hope you guys liked today's episode. If you did, please leave us a review on iTunes. As I said earlier, you can check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash pilot the pilot, or send me an email of what you thought. You can also head over to our website, pilot the pilot hq.com. Avi Nation, let me know if you are going to be at Oshkosh. I am going to be there for three days, maybe two, possibly Wednesday through Friday or Wednesday through Saturday. I don't know for sure yet. But let me know if you guys are going to be there. I'd love to meet you guys. I'm contemplating doing a meetup. Don't really know if I want to do it. Might embarrass myself by no one showing up. But if you're going to be there, let me know. Shoot me an email, pilotthepilothq at gmail.com, or you know how to reach me. Avenation, as always, happy flying.